welcome to my Bonito Crafts channel and to this the first in a set of videos on how to work this pretty little Milanese angel. In this video I shall be showing you how to work the wing section that is used in both variations of this pretty design. So let's get started. So the wings are worked in the same way for both versions of the angel. We're going to work the outer wing sections one, two and three in Lotus One, a variation of Lotus One that uses 11 pairs rather than the standard 15. For the top section we're going to work that in a braid that's called Pebbles which is one of a, a newer set of braids from Pat Reed and the next two sections we're going to work in half stitch with a cloth stitch pair or possibly two cloth stitch pairs on the lower edge and then the right hand wings again we're going to work in that lotus one variation so i'm going to start off by placing a pin in the very top pinhole of section one i'm going to hang four pairs open on that pin like a rainbow so they all sit around each other one two Three, four, and these are going to form our two outer edge pairs and two of the passive pairs. So I'm going to twist the two left hand pairs twice, and with the two right hand pairs, I'm going to work a cloth stitch and two twists. So they are all now linked around that top pinhole. Then I'm going to place a pin on the next pinhole down on the right hand side. This is a temporary pin, I'm going to reuse this uh, when I come back to the right hand side. So I'm going to lay two pairs open on this pin. Leaving the right hand pair behind, I'm going to work the left hand pair through two pairs of bobbins to the left in cloth stitch, twist twice, work my edge stitch of cloth stitch and two twists and pin up under two pairs. The threads are all a bit wobbly at the moment because it's the very start of the lace. Then I'm going to come back through one, two, three pairs. That third one is the, the right hand side of those two new pairs that I placed in. I'm going to twist the worker twice and I'm going to pin under two pairs after working that edge stitch and I'm going to reuse that temporary pin that I placed. So I'm going to take that pin out and replace it. Tension up. Again, everything's a little bit wobbly at this stage. So now I want to work in cloth stitch until I reach pinhole A. And I need to add in pairs so that I get to 11 pairs by the time we get to pinhole A. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we need another five pairs. And we're going to work one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows. So five pairs over seven rows. So I'm going to work the first row just in cloth stitch. Twist twice edge stitch and pin up and then I'm going to come back in cloth stitch, twist twice, edge stitch and pin up. So that's nice and firm and those pairs are just filling that braid. So now I'm going to start adding new pairs. So I'm going to push this top pinhole down and I'm going to add a temporary pin above the work. In fact, I'm going to add two and you'll see why in a moment. And I'm going to pop a pin in each of those pinholes. So now I've got five rows left to 
to get to pin A. So I'm going to add a pair of threads at every single pinhole. So I'm going to hang one pair over one of those support pins at the top and I'm going to lay it astride one of the bobbins, in fact the left hand bobbin of the central pair. Then I'm going to work a crossing cloth stitch. So this time we've got one, two, three, four pairs. Work my edge stitch and pin up. So when you work your edge stitch, you twist the pairs twice as you come to the edge and then you work a cloth stitch and two twists and pin up under two pairs. So now I'm going to place another pair on my other temporary pin and again I'm going to lay that astride the left hand bobbin and this time we've got two central pairs so I'm going to lay it astride the left hand bobbin of one of those. Work across the row so we're all in cloth stitch at this stage, twist twice, work my edge stitch and pin under two. And tension. Now I'm going to remove, just lift up that left hand temporary pin and let the thread drop down gently into the work. Replace the pin and add another new pair on that pin. So you want to be very careful that the threads are coming in between your pins either side because we don't want to catch on the, on the pins and give you any loops. So again, this time I've got an odd number of passives. So I'll lay it astride the left hand bobbin of that middle pair. Work back in cloth stitch. Twist twice, work my edge stitch and pin. Tension, so I'm making sure that my threads fill the space and the entire width of that braid. Then I'm going to lift that right hand temporary pin, let the thread drop down, add a new pair on it. and lay it astride the left hand bobbin of one of the two centre pairs. So here we are, I'm going to lay it astride that bobbin there. Work across the row in cloth stitch. Twist twice stitch and two twists and pin up tension then I'm going to release that left hand support pin let the thread drop down and I'm going to lay my final pair in stride the left hand bobbin of that centre pair. Work back across the row. Twist the worker twice. Work my edge stitch of cloth stitch and two twists. Pin up and tension. So now that's, that's pin A that I've just placed. All the pairs are in and I'm ready to start on that first decorative braid. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work the first row of the decorative braid and then I'm going to drop those temporary support pins down. So the braid is uh, Lotus One, a variation of Lotus One. So the traditional Lotus One braid takes 15 pairs. But that would be too much for the width of the section I'm working. So I've adapted it um, to work it with 11 pairs. 
So the traditional lotus, you would have everything is in uh, the crossovers are in blocks of four. And whereas in this version, the crossovers are in blocks of two. So working across the row for the passives, I need to do a little bit of foundation work before I work the rows across and back. So working from the left, I'm going to twist the first pair. With the next two pairs, I'm going to work them in cloth stitch. With the next two pairs, I'm going to work them in cloth stitch. With the third two pairs, I'm going to work those in cloth stitch. And I'm going to put a twist on that last pair. Then I'm going to come back across the row and I'm going to cloth stitch the first two pairs. Then the next two pairs, then the next two pairs, and then the final two pairs. So that's given the crossover effect, which is going to give us our, our feathery finish on the braid. So now I'm going to pick up my worker. And these are sitting in sort of groups of two where I've cloth, cloth stitched them through each other. So the first row, I'm going to work two pairs in cloth stitch. Twist the worker twice. Work two pairs in cloth stitch. Twist the worker twice. Work two pairs in cloth stitch. Twist the worker twice. And two pairs in cloth stitch. Twist the worker twice. Work my edge stitch, cloth stitch and two twists and pin up under two pairs. Now it's worth remembering that at this very start of this section of braid, the work is very, very tight. So you are going to need to tension very carefully as you get going so that you don't sort of have wrinkles and bumps in your braid. So I'm just tugging down all the pairs across the row and as I always say with Milanese the mantra is tension 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 you're tensioning all the time with Milanese so that's the first row and I'm going to repeat that same row two more times and I'm just going to before I carry on I'm just going to drop down those two pairs into the work There we go. Find the other pair. There we are. So I'm going to work that last row two more times. So cloth stitch through two, twist twice, cloth stitch through two, twist twice, cloth stitch through two, twist twice, cloth stitch through two, twist twice. Cloth stitch and two twists for my edge. And pin up. Then tension. I'm tensioning every single row at this stage because the work is very, very tight. And I'm not pulling really hard. I'm just pulling firmly enough that the pairs sit where I want them. So one more row. So that's cloth stitch through two, twist twice. Cloth stitch through two, twist twice, cloth stitch through two, twist twice, cloth stitch through two, twist twice, work my edge stitch, cloth stitch and two twists, and pin up. So now I've done three rows that I've worked in exactly the same way. I should tension those up. And now I'm going to work three more rows, but this time I'm going to offset the position of the twists. And this is going to start bringing the threads out into the direction that I want them in, ready for uh, the, the next crossover section. So I'm, this time I'm going to work through one pair twist twice and then back to two so two pairs and two twists two pairs and 
two twists, two pairs and two twists, then through that final pair, twist twice, work my edge stitch of cloth stitch and two twists, pin up and tension. And I'm making sure as I tension that the passive pairs fill the width of the braid so that you don't get the threads pulling in from the edge. So I'm going to work that again. So one pair in cloth stitch, twist twice, then two, twist twice, then two, twist twice, then two, twist twice. Then one, twist twice, work my edge stitch. And pin under two pairs. Again, carefully tensioning so that those pairs sit nicely and evenly across the braid. I'm tensioning all the passives and then I'll just give a little gentle tug on the workers and the edge pair there and then one final row in the same way so through one twist twice through two twist twice through two twist twice through two twist twice through one, twist twice, work my edge stitch, cloth stitch and two twists, and pin and tension up. And that's one complete repeat of the braid. So tension that up. And we're ready to start again. I'll go through that one more time. So we'll start off with the foundation row of crosses. And you can see now actually, that now we've worked one pattern repeat, the, the threads are, are sitting in groups. So it, it'll be easier to see which ones you're working with. So along this first row, so from left to right, I'm going to twist the first pair. I'm going to cloth stitch the next group of two then cloth stitch the next group of two, cloth stitch the next group of two, and then twist that final pair. And then coming back to offset them, I shall cloth stitch those into two. Then here you can see taking one from each side, so cloth stitch the next group of two, cloth stitch those in two, and the last two pairs in two. Then we're going to do three rows of cloth stitch with two twists after every two pairs. So cloth stitch through two, twist twice, cloth stitch through two, twist twice, cloth stitch through two, twist twice, cloth stitch through two, twist twice. Work my edge stitch, twist twice and pin up under two pairs. Tension. Again, making sure that those outer pairs come out to the outside of the braid and make sure that as I'm tensioning them, I'm positioning the threads where I want them to sit. And come back, cloth stitch through two, twist twice, cloth stitch through two, twist twice, cloth stitch through two, twist twice, cloth stitch through two, twist twice. Edge stitch, cloth stitch and two twists and pin up. Tension.
The other benefit of regular tensioning is that you're looking at your threads, uh, you're looking at where they're going to sit and it's a good opportunity to to check yourself, check your work and while you're tensioning quite often you can spot perhaps a, an error, a twisted thread or something like that. So this final third row, cross stitch through two, twist twice, cross stitch through two, twist twice, cross stitch through two, twist twice, cross stitch through two, twist twice and work my edge stitch and pin. I'm just turning the pillow so that I'm always keeping the braid coming directly towards me. It's particularly important when you're working on a curve um, just to make sure that you're working line is is correct so now we're going to start offsetting so we're going to do a further three rows and this time we're going to cross stitch through one twist twice then return to the two so through two twist twice through two twist twice through two twist twice through one twist twice and I can just see actually that one of my threads is just coming untwisted a little so I'm just going to give that a little bit of twist back up in the correct direction. That's because uh, when I work I must put a natural twist to the to the right on the thread so every now and then I have to watch it and twist it up the other way. Twist the pair twice, edge stitch and pin and tension again watching the position of those pairs making sure they sit nicely and evenly across the braid then we come back again cross stitch through one twist twice then through two twist twice through two twist twice through two twist twice through one twist twice cross stitch and two twists pin up and tension And then one last row, cross stitch through one, twist twice, through two, twist twice, through two, twist twice, through two, twist twice, through one, twist twice, work my edge stitch and pin up under two pairs. I'm ready to start that first foundation row of the crossover stitches for the braid. So you can start to see already that uh, as the, the braid has widened out a little bit, the threads are spacing out a little bit and you're just getting this sort of feathery effect. So I'm going to continue working along this braid until I reach the red line on the pattern that tells me that's where the wing finishes. So that's the first half of the top wing worked and I've worked as far as this red line. So I've worked 11 repeats of the braid and I'm going to finish off with um, another set of the foundation row uh, to 
to complete that section before we go into the next braid. So to do that, again, I'm going to twist the first pair once, cloth stitch those two, cloth stitch those two, cloth stitch the next two, and twist the final pair once, and then come back, cloth stitch the first two pairs, cloth stitch the next two pairs, and the next two pairs, and the final two pairs. And that just neatens the edge so that the, the end of the braid matches the start of the braid. Um, and also that, that will um, work when I reflect and start the braid back up on the other half of the wing. So I'm now going to add an extra pair because the braid that we're going to work this top section of the bodice needs 12 pairs. This is one of the braids from... Uh, a previously a, a currently unpublished set of braids uh, from Pat Reed and, and Lucy Kincaid. Um, I do have permission to use these braids in my in my patterns. So I'm going to add this extra pair in the centre of the braid because the new braid uh, uses two workers. So we've got our edge pairs and our worker here and I'm just going to divide the remaining passives into two to find the centre of my braid and you can see it just sits neatly under that middle cross over there. So I'm going to bring the worker in from the left in cloth stitch and then I'm going to hang my new pair on a support pin above the work. I don't need to lay this astride anything because it's coming in as part of a turning stitch, which I'm going to pin. So a turning stitch is five movements. It's cross, twist, cross, twist, cross. And it's effectively a half stitch immediately followed by a cloth stitch. So when I'm pinning in the middle of a turning stitch, I will work the half stitch, so the first two movements, place my pin, and then I'll work the remaining three movements, which is the cloth stitch. So my half stitch, cross twist. I'm going to pin between the two pairs. So that's my worker and the new pair that are coming into the braid. And then I'm going to work a cloth stitch, which is my third, fourth and fifth movements, cross twist cross. So now I can release that support pin and drop that pair straight down because it will be supported on that pin in the middle of the braid. And then I'm going to work the two, two worker pairs out to the outside of the braid and I'm going to just do those in cloth stitch for this very first row. So cloth stitch all the way out twist twice and work my edge stitch and pin you'll see I've got some red circled pins on my uh, pinholes on my pattern those are for later I will explain that later on then I'm going to come back to the center of the braid and I'm going to pick up that second worker my new pair that's been laid in and I'm going to take that in cloth stitch to the right hand side of my braid, twist twice, work my edge stitch and pin up under two pairs and tension that down. So I now have two workers, one at each side of the work and the remaining passives currently all in cloth stitch. So the pebbles braid, we bring the two workers in from the outside. We, we work each, each of the workers in through two pairs, twist twice, two pairs, twist once. Then when the two workers meet in the middle, I'm going to work a cloth stitch and twist with those two workers before taking them out to the outside edges in the opposite direction after they've crossed over in two pairs cloth stitch 
twist twice, two pairs cloth stitch, and then do the edge stitch. So when I'm working a braid, a particularly one with two workers, I try and work it in the same sort of rhythm each time. So if I come in from the left first, I will always come in from the left first. If I take, when I've done the centre pair, if I go out to the left first, I'll always go out to the left first. And that just helps to keep an even tension on your braid and prevent it because if you if you do the left on one repeat and the right on the other repeat then you run the risk of your braid starting to to wobble around a little bit because it does affect the tension so i'm going to bring the worker in from the left and i'm going to through two pairs in cloth stitch twist twice through two more pairs in cloth stitch twist once and i'm going to leave that there i'm going to come back to the right hand side pick up my worker from here and I'm going to come through two pairs in cloth stitch, twist twice, two more pairs in cloth stitch and twist once. So my workers are both now at the middle of the braid and I'm going to work those in a cloth stitch and twist. Then I'm going to take the left hand worker and I'm going to go in two pairs in cloth stitch, twist twice, two more pairs in cloth stitch twist twice and work my edge stitch on the left just tension those left hand passives and then just a little tension on my right hand worker which is sitting waiting in the middle and I'm going to take that through two pairs in cloth stitch twist twice, two pairs in cloth stitch, twist twice and work my edge stitch on the left hand side and pin up and that's one repeat of the braid. So tension that. You can see it's forming a nice little separation there where the twists are in the braid. Now I'm going to go back to the left hand side because as I said if I start at the left I'll always do the left first and I'll come through two pairs in cloth stitch, twist twice, two pairs in cloth stitch, twist once and let that worker sit there in the middle and wait. Then I'm going to come back to the right hand edge and pick up my right hand worker, two pairs in cloth stitch twist twice, two pairs in cloth stitch, twist twice, uh, sorry twist once, getting carried away and now the two workers are meeting in the middle. So work cloth stitch and twist with the two workers and then I can take my left hand worker out to the left hand side, two pairs in cloth stitch, twist twice, two pairs in cloth stitch, twist twice, work my edge stitch and pin it up, tension those left hand passives, grab that worker that's sitting at the centre of the braid and tension that, I'm, so I'm just, you see, I'm just making sure as I tension that I'm pulling those threads into the path I want them to sit. And then picking up my right hand worker from the middle of the braid, we'll go two pairs in cloth stitch, twist twice, two pairs in cloth stitch, twist twice, and work my edge stitch and pin. And tension up. Again, making sure those pairs sit where I want them to sit them in the braid. So you can see we've got sort of a vein here and a vein here and then a wider vein with the crossover in the middle. So I'm going to carry on until I reach the red line on the opposite side of my uh, bodice. We've come to the end of the braid 
and now we need to go back to the original Lotus um, one variation that we did before. Um, so we need to go back to one worker instead of two and we need to reduce the pairs again because we put in that extra pair for this braid and we don't need that anymore. So I'm going to bring the workers through from each side and two pairs cloth stitch, twist twice, two pairs cloth stitch and leave. I'm not going to put that twist on for the moment. And then coming from the right hand side, two pairs cloth stitch, twist twice, two pairs cloth stitch and leave. And then I'm going to do the same turning stitch with the pin in that I did before and then I can lay back one of the pairs. So I'm going to work a half stitch, pin and then a cloth stitch to close. So the left hand pair will be my worker and that will go out to the outside of the braid. And the right hand pair we don't need anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just tie this off with a reef knot, probably a reef knot and a half, I think, around that pin and lay it to the back of the pillow. And then later on, we'll be just be able to cut those ends off. And that's just an unobtrusive little knot that will sit at the back of the work and it will be tucked behind where the wing folds back over the uh, the body section when we put the angel together. So we're now back to 11 pairs and we're going to go back to the Lotus One Variation braid with a difference um, because I would like the, the wings to reflect each other. I'm going to work the second half of the braid in reverse. Uh, so the only difference really is, is the the crossovers and then where you place the twists. So if I just show you in the pattern, when we worked this braid the first time, we had a single pair and then we cloth stitched these two, cloth stitched these two and then a single pair. And then we divided them up into three lots of two and cloth stitched them in three lots of two. And then the first three rows were twisting every two pairs and then the second three rows we offset that twist. So if I turn the pattern upside down, because that's effectively what we want to do, we're going to start off by dividing the passives into blocks of three lots of two pairs. So we're going to cross stitch the first two, the second lot of two and the third lot of two. And then we will offset, so we will twist that first pair, then we'll do cloth stitch with the next two, cloth stitch with the next two, and twist that pair. So that also means that we will work the six rows in reverse order as well. So the first three rows will be one pair, twist twice, then two pairs, twist twice, two pairs, twist twice, one pair, twist twice. And then the second block of three rows will go back to two pairs twist, two pairs twist, two pairs twist. But I'll demonstrate it here so you can watch back and see what I'm doing. So first things first, I'm going to take that worker that's still sitting at the centre of the braid out in cloth stitch to the left hand side. Work my edge stitch and pin. And then working across the braid, I shall divide the pairs into twos. So I shall cloth stitch the first set of two, the second set of two, the third set of two, and the fourth set of two. Then I'm going to, coming back, I'm going to twist that first pair, then cloth stitch the next two, cloth stitch the next two, cloth stitch the next two, leaving one at the end to put a twist on. 
So now I'll come to work the first three rows and because we're going upside down I shall do one pair in cloth stitch, twist twice, two pairs, twist twice, two pairs, twist twice, two pairs, twist twice, one pair, twist twice, work my edge stitch. And pin. Tension up. Now remembering that we're coming out of one braid and into another so the tensioning is a little bit sort of higgledy piggledy in a way. So you just want to get that set up so that all those pairs are in the positions in the braid that you want them to go to. It's no good tensioning further down, hoping it'll tension that row you've just done. You need to do it each row to get the thread sitting where you want them to. So coming back, one pair, twist twice, two, twist twice, two, twist twice, two, twist twice, one, twist twice, edge stitch and pin and tension and then one more row one pair twist twice two pairs twist twice three pairs two pairs again sorry twist twice two pairs twist twice one pair twist twice work your edge stitch and pin tension this up so now we've worked the first three rows in the same way that we did going in the other direction we're then going to offset the location of the twists in those rows for the next three so you can see where we've got the gaps we want to push those pairs to make the gap offset so two pairs twist twice two pairs twist twice two pairs twist twice and the last two pairs twist twice and work your edge stitch tension up and to come back Two pairs, twist twice, two pairs, twist twice, two pairs, twist twice, two pairs, twist twice, edge stitch and pin. And again, tension. I said before tension 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 is your mantra for Milanese I cannot stress that enough so then one final row two pairs twist twice two pairs twist twice two pairs twist twice two pairs twist twice edge stitch and pin and tension so can you see when I'm tensioning I'm manipulating the threads to sit where I want them to sit in the braid so making sure that I'm easing them into place 
So that's one repeat and we're now ready to do our crossovers again. Again, remembering that we're doing upside down. But of course, because we've done one uh, braid repeat, the pairs are kind of already telling us where they want to go. Can you see they're already bunched into groups of two? So working from the left to the right, we'll cross stitch those four sets of two pairs together. And then coming back, we'll twist that first pair and we'll offset those cloth stitches coming back. So we've got three lots of two and then our single pair twisted at the end. And then once again, three rows of one pair twist twice then two twist, two twist, two twist, one twist twice, edge stitch. And tension. I find this quite meditative. I can get lost in it for hours. So coming back. One. And through two. Through two. Through two. And through one. And can you see whenever I tension, I'm just turning the pillow slightly so that the angle of the braid is coming directly towards me. So that when I tension and I'm just gently tucking those pairs straight down, they're sitting where I want them to go. So one more row. That's through two, twist, through two. Twists through two twists. When I say twist, I mean two twists. The edge stitch and the pin. So that's our first three rows. Tension up. And then now three more rows where we offset those twists. So this time we're going to work through two pairs and then put our twists on. So one, two, two twists, one, two, two twists, one, two, two twists, one, two, two twists. And tension. And again, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And one final row for this repeat. So one, two, twist twice. One, two, one, two, and one, two. So we're going to carry on with this braid in the same way. 
until we've worked 11 repeats and then it'll be time to go back to cloth stitch start reducing the number of pairs in time for finishing at the point and the next part of the design. This is the point where the braid has now finished and as I did before I'm going to put the final sort of crossovers row on the braid so that it matches with the opposite side. So that's those second set of crossovers. Now when you get to this point you will have five pinholes on the left hand side. I've amended the original pattern to ensure that that happens. I've ended up I've only got four so I need to throw out my pairs a lot quicker. So the same principle um, applies however many pinholes you've got left to work. When you know what you need to reduce to count the number of rows you have left to work and work out how many pairs you need to throw out each row. So I've got 11 pairs. I want to get down to four pairs at the point so that I can roll back in both directions. So counting my pinholes, I can see that I have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows in which to lose seven pairs of bobbins because you will have an extra extra pinhole on both sides you will have nine rows in which to lose your seven pairs of bobbins so i need to lose one pair on each row so i'm going to work across and i'm in cloth stitch now I'm going to work a row and lay back a pair and I'm going to do this on every row till I get to the bottom of the section of lace. So I'm going to take pairs out from the centre of the braid, so making sure that I've got whole pairs. I'm going to lift out one bobbin from the two central pairs and I'm going to take the right hand bobbin of the two pairs. So these are my two pairs here and I'm going to lift bobbin two and bobbin four. The reason I do it that way is that by lifting those two out I'm not going to get a gap in the th in the, the lace. If I were to lift bobbins one and three you get a bit of a gap there. So laying out two and four And then I can work my next row. So again, cloth stitch back across the row. Work my edge stitch. Tension up. You can see because I am a couple of rows short, mine is very, very tight, but yours won't be so. So again, I'm going to find the middle of the braid. So this time we've kind of got three pairs in the middle. So we can either take um, pairs from those two or pairs from those two. It really doesn't matter. The main thing is that you take threads two and four. 
again, work another row. When I lay my pairs back, I'm keeping them in order so that after I have uh, laid them all back, I will tie them off with a reef, reef knot just, just to be safe. They're in very tight cloth stitch. Theoretically, you shouldn't really need to tie a knot, but I just think by doing so, it means I don't run the risk of having any little fluffy ends poking through to the front of my lace. So again, I'm going to go for the central two pairs and I'm going to take threads two and four and lay them back. Again, I'm very carefully tensioning each row. Go to the middle of the braid. I'm going to take two and four from that pair and lay them back. Work my next row. When I get to the bottom and I've laid my final pair out, I should be left with the two edge pairs, the worker, and one final passive. My last pinhole. Threads two and four. So now I'm at the bottom. I've got one, two edge pairs. I've got my worker and my last passive. So to finish off at this point, I'm going to put two twists on that passive. And then I'm going to basically work half a spider. So the two pairs from the left are going to work through the two pairs from the right. And that just neatly closes off the point. And that will be ready to roll back. So I'm going to turn my pillow. I'm going to push down all the pins apart from the one at the point. And the one at the point I'm just going to lift and I'm going to angle so it's pointing backwards so that these pairs can tug against it when they come back round. And these pairs that I've got in order, so the ones on the right were the first ones I laid out and the ones on the left were the last and I'm just going to tie those off with a reef knot. Just as little extra insurance that I won't get any fluffy ends coming through to the front of the work. I zoom out so you can see the reef knot right over left and under left over right.
and I'm just going to cut these long for the moment and I shall come back and trim those short later on. So I just twist these, I can pin them out of the way on my pillow so that I can start rolling. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the pillow back round and then I'm going to start rolling the edges. So we're going to roll two pairs round the right hand side and two pairs round the left hand side and they are going to meet at these four marked pinholes here where I shall complete a tapered roll. So I'm going to work the rolled edge and I'm going to start working around the left hand side and once that's established I shall come back to the point and work the right hand side. I never start at the pinhole at the point because we've only just closed that pin there's no stability to it to be able to get your hook in to do your rolled edge. So I'm going to work from the next one along. I've got four threads in my bundle and you need a bobbin that's got a good deal of thread on it as your rolling thread. Um, rolling is quite thread hungry. So I'm just going to lengthen that one. That's going to be my rolling thread. So I'll put a little bit more on those. And then essentially what's going to happen is I'm going to make a sewing into the edge of every pinhole under the edge of the work. And I'm going to bring this rolling thread around under the edge of the work, under the bundle, and I'm going to bring up a loop and I'm going to uh, pass the, the bobbin through its own loop so it wraps that bundle. And then I'm going to do the rolling action which brings the bobbin from front to the back of the pillow to roll the edge and make a nice firm raised edge. So I take out the first pin I will do this at a zoom out and then I shall zoom in so that you can see exactly what I'm doing with the hook. So I'm going to take the hook under the edge of the work under the bundle of threads and I'm going to pick up my rolling thread and bring a loop through the pinhole. Then I'm going to pass the bobbin through its own loop, taking care not to catch it on that pin at the point. And I'm going to gently ease that up till it's tight against the bundle. And then keeping the tension on that bobbin, I'm going to bring the bobbin up and over. It's quite tricky to do with the camera and the lights in the way. Uh, and that brings it over, rolls it over the edge of the work. Then I'm going to take the next pin and place it in that pinhole and I'm going to move on. So I'm going to take a hook under the edge, under the bundle, pick up the rolling thread and pull a loop going to pass the bobbin through its own loop and gently pull that to the back of the pillow to close the loop up and with the tension on that thread I'm going to roll it back over the work. So you're keeping that rolling thread nice and firm and I'm also just tensioning on the bundle threads to keep those nice and firm as well. Move the pin along. I'll do one more at this, this angle and then I'll zoom in for the others. Go underneath the edge, under the bundle, pick up my rolling thread, 
bring a loop through, pass the bobbin through its own loop, lay to the back of the pillow, taking care not to get, see now I've got myself the loop caught up, so I'm just going to ease that in with the hook, keeping attention to the thread, roll it back over. Take out the next pin and move along. So if I zoom in, so I'm going to go in the pinhole and under the edge of the work, under the bundle, pick up the rolling thread. Bring the loop through. I'm going to pass the bobbin through its own loop. Ease that down to the work. Tension up and then keeping the tension on that thread and rolling it over the edge. We'll do one more. So put my hook in the hole under the edge of the work and under the bundle, hook my rolling thread, bring a loop through, pass the bobbin through its own loop and ease that down to the edge of the work, keeping tension on and roll it over. And I'm going to carry on rolling until I am the pinhole before the four red marked pinholes. And I'm also going to work in the other direction. So I'll start that off now so you can see it. I'm going to move that just out of the way so I can show you this side. So now that I've started the roll on, on the outside, it'll give me the firmness that I need to be able to start rolling from the point here. So again, I'm going to lengthen one of my bobbins. I'm going to take the pin out at the point. I'm going to put my hook into the pinhole under the edge of the work. Hook up the rolling thread. Pass the bobbin through its own loop and roll that over. Take my next pin out and I'm going to place that in the pin hole that I've just rolled. Let's press some of these down. Get this out of the way. So then in my next pinhole, in the hole, under the edge, under the bundle, catch the rolling thread, bring it through, take the bobbin through its own loop, ease that down to the work and roll it over. So I'm going to continue. As I said, if I lay this back, the outside pairs I'm going to roll all the way round, all the way round the outside to here, and then the pairs from here I'm going to roll all the way round the inside and then round the other outside to there, and then I shall show you how to taper that roll at this point here. I'm now ready to work my tapered roll across the four marked pinholes on the pattern. It doesn't matter which order I do this in, so I can come from the left first or from the right first, the result is exactly the same. So in this case I'm going to work from the left hand side first. 
So in the first pinhole, and if I just zoom in a little, so in the first pinhole, I'm going to do a normal rolling stitch as we've done all the way around so far. I'm going to now lift the pin from the next pinhole along. I've got a loop. That's it. Okay. I'm going to lift the pin from the next pinhole along, place it in the one I've just rolled, and then I'm going to lay back to the back of the pillow one of the threads from the bundle. So I've now got my rolling thread and two bundle threads. So I'm going to work the next pinhole. Move the pin along. And I'm going to take a second thread from the bundle and lay that back across the pillow. So each time I work a roll I've got fewer threads in the bundle. So this is the third one. Now I've just got one thread in the bundle. Make that rolling stitch. Move the pin along. And lay out that third thread. So now I'm just left with my rolling thread. So I'm going to still work the roll stitch just round the edge of the work with that rolling thread. And then I'm going to lay that thread back to the back of the pillow. So now I'm going to work in the opposite direction with the roll coming from the other side. And I'm going to work an ordinary roll stitch under the whole bundle in the pinhole that I've just worked. Move the pin along and then I'm going to lay back one thread and I'm just laying that round the same side of the pin that I'd laid that other rolling pair out. At the next pin hole I'll work the rolling stitch again. Just moving the pinhole out of the way so the pin out of the way so I don't get a loop. Roll that, move the pin along. Perhaps I'm going to push these down and lay a second thread out, which will join with the one from the previous direction. Work the third pinhole. This time I'm only going under one thread in the bundle plus my rolling thread. Move the pin across, lay that thread out again, the same side of the pin as the previous thread, and then work the final, just the rolling thread into that final pinhole. Replace that pin and then lay this thread 
to the back of the pillow with its partner. So now across four pin holes, I just push those pins down. So to each of those four pin holes, I have a pair of threads and now I can just tie those off on the back of the bundle, on the back of the roll. So I'm going to tie with a reef knot and a half. Zoom out so you can see those last couple. So there you can see my four knots and I'm just going to cut these threads long and what I shall do is I shall just twist those up and fix them with a pin across the pillow and I'm going to leave those long until I've worked past that section on the next section of lace and the reason I'm going to do that is because I can then work the sewings as I go past keeping these long threads out of the way and then it'll mean that I can just give a little bit of a tug on those those long threads to make sure that the knot sits underneath and behind the work and doesn't get pulled through to the front of the work when you're working those sewings. So the next thing to do will be to start section two where we will sew into the top of the braid and attach as we go along. So I'm all prepped and ready to start section two. This section has an edge stitch around the outside or lower edge of the wing but on the top edge of the wing it's sewn in to the the section that we've already worked. So I want to talk a little bit about sewings now. So there are two kinds of sewings that we generally use in Milanese lace. There's the top or bar sewing and the side or edge sewing. So I tend to use the top sewing or bar sewing method. Um, if I take out a couple of pin, pins from the holes, I can show you. So I'm going to take a couple of pin holes out here and then I'm going to zoom right in so you can see what I'm looking at. Let's see if I can get in closer. So you can see here that I've taken two pins out and that that reveals the edge here and it reveals the bars at the sides of the pin holes. So when I'm working top or bar sewing I'm making my sewing into these bars either side of the pinhole. So if I show you here with my hook, if I take my hook into the pinhole, underneath and over the top of the edge of the work. So that's where I'm going to make my sewing and I'm going to pull the thread back through that, that loop there. If you were working an edge or a side sewing, you would take your hook into the hole and you'd push it under the lace completely and out through the side of the work. Now, the reason I don't use the side sewings is because I use rolled edges in most of my designs. And if you work a sewing into the side like this, then your thread is coming underneath the work or which 
if you turn it over that will be the top of the work and what happens is it makes a sewing around the edge of the work which which means you lose the effect that you're getting from that rolled edge so by going into the sidebar all your sewing is completed on the back of the work so that when you turn it over that rolled edge that you've worked sits proud and on top of the section that you're working now so that's the difference between top and side sewings and i always use top sewings for the majority of my work if if i use something different in my videos i will obviously say the rolled edges are worked with a side sewing because they're wrapping the edge of the work so i've left that pin out and i'm going to sew two pairs in to this top pin hole one of which will be a passive pair for this section and the other will become my edge pair so i'm going to go into the hole of the pin hole i'm going to go under that bottom side bar and i'm going to over the top of the roll then i'm going to catch my pair under my hook and pull it back through the pinhole now because i'm sewing in two pairs here if i zoom out just a tiny bit i'm going to pass the second pair through that loop if i was sewing just the one pair in i would pass one of the bobbins of that pair through its own loop so i'm going to pass the second pair through this loop this just gives me it's easier because I haven't got to make two sewings into the same sidebar and also it's less bulk at the back of that pinhole. So one of these uh, pairs is going to be my edge pair and one is going to be a passive. So just unloop those a bit. So I'm going to lay one out to the left hand side to be my edge pair and I'm going to put two twists on that. And then this second pair here is going to be a passive. So I now need a worker to join them. And I'm going to actually sew this into the same pinhole. So under that same sidebar. So can you imagine if I were to be sewing three pairs in here using a conventional method, then that's going to be an awful lot of bulk. So effectively, I've only got two sewings in this pinhole for three pairs of bobbins. Unhook that. So now I've got my worker, a passive and my edge pair. So I'm going to work through my passive twist the worker twice, cloth stitch and two twists to make my edge stitch and pin up. So from now on all my new pairs are going to be laid in uh, to the centre of the braid in exactly the same way we did when we were working the first section. So I'm going to put two temporary pin holes above my work And I'm going to put a pin in each of those pin holes. Hang on my first new pair and lay it astride that first passive. Cloth stitch back through the two pairs. And then I'm going to work a sewing into this next pin hole down. So I'm going to take the pin out of there and I'm actually going to pop that back in that first pin hole just to give it a little bit more stability. Generally, when I'm making sewings, joining one section of work to another, I don't put the pin back in. But occasionally you will need that extra stability, so I will do it. So I want for this section, I want the cloth stitch to sit right up against this work. I don't want a gap. So for that reason, I'm not going to put a twist on the worker. I'm going to lay the top hand thread to the back of the pillow 
and I'm going to make my sewing and hook the bottom thread through it. So I'm going to go under the bottom side bar of that pinhole, bring it over the top of the edge of the work, hook up my lower thread of my worker to get my loop. Then I'm going to pass the partner bobbin of that worker through the loop and gently tension up. And then I'm going to put one twist on that pair. And now I'm going to just push down that pin I put back in. I'm going to hang another pair on my other support pin, lay it astride a pair in my braid. And this time I'm going to cluster stitch through one, two, three passives, twist my work twice, work my edge stitch and pin up. So I'm aiming to get 10 pairs of bobbins in by the time I reach pin B, because that will be where I'm going to start the braid. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. So I've got another five pairs to go. It's only 10 pairs, whereas this first section was 11 pairs. This is only 10 pairs. And that's because the sewings replace the right hand edge pair. So I'm going to just lift this left hand support pin and let that initial pair that I put in drop down. Hang a new pair on that pin. Lay it astride a passive around the centre of the braid and bring my worker back through in cloth stitch. So one, two, three, four pairs now. Lift my next pinhole on the inside. Move my top thread out of the way and make my sewing into the bottom side bar as I look at it. So I come over the edge of the work. Pass the partner through the loop, tension up and put a twist on. Tension down my passives, release that right hand support pin and let that pair drop down and then I'll add another one in. So I'm going to carry on like this till I've got all pairs in and work in any remaining rows in cloth stitch until I get to pin B. So I'm just coming up to pin B and I'm about to work the, the final sewing before I head back to it. And I can see that my pinhole is actually slightly, the, the, the bottom bar of my pinhole is actually slightly lower down than pin B. Now this is, this is what's going to happen on section two and on section three. With the first section, I calculated the pin spacing. So I made the pin spacing on the inside of the curve closer together so that you could just work the whole section through. But with the second two sections, you, you can't do that because the pins on the outside would just be too far apart. So we need to gain on the outside edge as we come around. So if you if you look at the direction of my crochet hook, it's kind of pivoting round a point on the right hand side. So in order to do this, we need to make extra sewings on the inside edge. Now, because I'm doing top stroke bar sewings, that's easy to do because all we do is we, instead of working a sewing into the bottom bar of the pinhole, we will do the first sewing into the top bar and then come back and use the bottom bar as well. So in effect, we're using this pin on the right hand side, we're using that pin hold twice and using that twice, we can just get a little bit further round on the outside. So as you're working section two and section three, you are need you are going to need to keep an eye on your working line. And if it helps, use a hook or a needle pin just to hold 
um, a line or even a piece of paper to hold a line directly straight across the pattern and make sure that your braid is keeping straight across the pattern as you work down and if it's starting to drift out and what will happen is it'll drift down on the right hand side and, and up on the left so if it's starting to go at an angle like this then you need to work sewings into both the top and bottom bar of your pinhole to keep it at this angle so if I take this pin out, I can show you, if I zoom right in. So instead of taking my sewing into this bottom bar here, I'm going to take a sewing into the top bar. So that's the first time I'm using that pinhole. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop a pin back in that pinhole and bring the pair around the top of it just to give a bit of support at that pinhole. Now I can work out to pin B. Work my edge stitch and pin where I'm ready to start my decorative braid. So I'm just going to tension up first. Being careful not to pull too hard where you've added those pairs in. So now I can work my foundation row for the for the braid. So that was that. I won't uh, spend too much detail on this because I covered it in the previous part of the video when I was doing the first braid. So I'm going to rattle along here put my foundation stitches in then I can work my first row across of the braid And again, I'm not going to put any twists on the workers because I want the next section to sit nice and closely up against the first section. Take that pin out again. And then this time, I'm going to make my sewing into the bottom bar of that pin hole. And this time I'm not going to put the pin back in place. So twist that worker, make sure I tension back across my braid. So it's just an extra layer of things to think about. So you mustn't forget your tensioning. And now when I come out from here, I'm going straight across to the pin on the opposite side. Whereas if I'd only use that pinhole once and worked into the next pinhole down, I would have been going uphill to that pinhole. So it's a good idea with Milanese, with all Milanese, you're thinking ahead, quite a few pinholes ahead of where you are and planning ahead so that you don't get caught out. So I'm now going to progress this braid, get down to the next section where we change over into the half stitch. I've worked 10 pattern repeats of that Lotus One variation and uh, I've now done the, the final row of foundation stitch like I did um, the foundation stitches like I did on the previous braid just to, to finish it off um, and I've finished it at the red line. Your red line will be in the right place for this, this finish on your final pattern. 
and I'm now going to change to a uh, half stitch and I'm going to put a couple of cloth stitch pairs on the left hand side and um, the reason I'm doing this is I don't know if you can see on here this is the other version um, you can just see a thickening in places where I've sewn the threads in and by putting a couple of rows of cloth stitch or a couple of um, pairs of cloth stitch on that bottom edge uh, it gives something for those knots to just be sort of disguised by a little bit you can't avoid the knots obviously because they're where you're sewing in the previous sections again going back to what I was saying about using the pinholes again I can see that I did that one, two, three, four, five, six, sort of about half a dozen times along that section. Um, and that was just using the top and bottom of the sidebars so that I could keep my um, braid sort of parallel as we work round. So I'm going to work, I don't need to add an extra pair here. I've only got the one worker, which is sitting at the left. So I'm going to do two pairs in cloth stitch, twist the worker once, and then I'm going to put a twist on these remaining pairs because we're going into half stitch. So then half stitch across the rest of the row. And so in. So here I can see that if I work this pin hole and come out, my next pin hole and come out will be going uphill a little bit. So I'm going to make a sewing into both those sidebars. You can also see on this pin hole that this is where my tapered roll was sewn, sewn in. So let me just do that top sidebar sewing try that again that's better back in bring the thread round so half stitch cloth stitch the last two pairs twist twice work my edge stitch and pin up The nice thing about using half stitch in a braid is that it, it tensions out quite nicely to fill whatever space you're working. It will take a couple of rows before it settles down coming out of that braid as well. So cloth stitch for two, twist my worker once, half stitch through. And now I'm going to sew into that bottom sidebar. But I've also got these threads that I left long where I sewed in the, uh, the rolled edge, the tapered roll. So I'm just going to lay that up to the back of the pillow, the pair that comes off that pinhole. I'm going to work my sewing in the bottom bar. And because I've left the knotted ends of those threads long, I can keep the knot out of the way when I'm doing my sewing. So then when I come, 
come back I can trim that knot off and it's not going to have been pushed through to the front hand side, front side of the work by the sewing that I've completed. So I'm going to carry on. Again, on the inside of the curve, and you're going to need to use pinholes twice a lot more on this, this central section because the curve of the work is a lot tighter than on the wing sections. So I'm going to continue on until I get to the end of this section, ready to go back into the, uh, the Lotus braid again. So I'm now going to work the second half of the decorative braid um, along the bottom section and I'm going to work it in the mirror image the same way that I did this first wing section so you can refer back to earlier in the video I'll put the timings on in the description so that you can jump to the different parts of the video so I'm going to work 10 pattern repeats of this lotus braid in reverse order and then I'm going to reduce the pairs down till I've got two pairs at this point ready to roll back. So I'm at the end of this braid section now and I've finished my, or I'm just about to finish my last bit of that, that braid. So I'll just do the, the crossover stitches just to finish off that braid so it matches with the other side and I know that I've got nine more rows to work and I've got ten pairs but I need two pairs left at the end so I've got ten pairs I need to lose eight and I've got nine rows so that's that's pretty much one a row so I'll probably do the first row and then throw out one pair every row so I'll sew in the last two pairs when I get there. I'll sew in the last two pairs into the sidebar of this pinhole here. And then I'll roll back with those two pairs around my lace. Now, I could, if I wanted to, I could roll those two pairs all the way around and finish them at this point here and sew them in and tie them off. That would give me a knot end at this point here. And if that's fluffy, that could show in the tip of your wing. And it's something that because of the location of it, it, it might well draw your eye to it. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to sew in two further pairs here and I'm going to roll back around with those and I've marked four pinholes there, and I'm going to finish off with the tapered roll in exactly the same way as I have with the, the first section. I've completed the wing section now. So as I just said, um, I'd rolled back that second section and I'd brought two pairs around to taper the roll here. Then I've worked section three, in exactly the same way that I work section two. Um, in section two, there were 10 pattern repeats of the Lotus braid on either side. And on section three, there were eight pattern repeats of the Lotus braid on either side. And once again, I rolled back from the end around here. And then I sewed in two more pairs at this point here and rolled back this way. And I've tapered the roll this time along the edge here. Now this sample um, I'm going to be working the second version of the the angel which is why I've tapered the roll there. In the other version um, I've put the four ringed pinholes along the bottom because then they can be used, the four pairs that you sew off can be used in the first braid for the first variation and that's how to work the wing section for both versions of the angel so you can now look out for my other videos the first one is how to work this uh, crossover braid for the first version of the the angel skirt then there's this one which shows you the second variation and how to work this lovely kernel stitch 
braid for the skirt. Thirdly, there's another video that just shows you how to mount the lace onto the little figurine. And finally, a video showing you how to paint the figurines so that you can have a nice little painted face if you want to. Of course, you can always leave those figurines blank. Thank you for watching.